is a before and after photograph that I restored uh, quite some time ago. And if you notice, on the left hand side we have the original scan and on the right hand side we have the final image that I've restored. And there's quite a bit of difference between the two. You'll notice just in the left hand bottom corner of the uh, before shot, you'll see there are quite a few imperfections and spots and and tainted marks on the outside edges of this photo and also on the photo itself. Now one of the specific tools in Photoshop that you can actually use to remove um, these types of spots or blemishes uh, uh, is the healing brush. Essentially the healing brush will let you correct imperfections in your photographs, uh, causing them simply to disappear into the surrounding image. Similar to other cloning tools, you can use the healing brush tool to paint over your image with samples of pixels predetermined by you. And as a result, the repaired pixels or areas in your photographs blend seamlessly into the rest of your image. Now, there is another version of the healing brush as I'm about to show you. So if we just go across to the tool menu on the left hand side of your working space and we just go down from the top, you'll notice it looks like a little band-aid. Now, you can press J on your keyboard to bring up this particular tool, or you can click and actually hold down on it. And what you'll see is there is also a spot healing brush tool as well as a healing brush tool. Now, whilst they're very similar, obviously the spot healing brush tool is more specific to um, concentrating and dealing with spots on your photographs. But first, let's just concentrate on actually utilizing the healing brush tool. So the first thing essentially you need to do is select the healing brush tool. The second thing you'll notice is you'll see up in the top of your working space with the options bar that you have a series of different options that you can actually adjust. The first being is obviously the brush size and we've been through this in previous videos where you can adjust the brush size, the hardness of the brush and the spacing etc etc. Uh, also you can also adjust if you're using a Wacom tablet or a stylus tablet with a pen you've also got the pressure sensitive settings here and the angle at which you actually adjust your uh, angle at which your pen will actually perform at. So we'll move on from that. Now what you'll notice here is that we have blending modes for the healing brush tool. Now they're not uh, identical to the blending modes that you normally see with regards to layers in the layers panel, except there are some uh, similar ones there that the main difference being there is a replace. Now replace isn't actually in layer blending modes. Um, but it is here for the healing brush tool, but the rest of the options here you'll probably be familiar with. Now with replace, replace is actually quite neat because it'll actually allow you to retain uh, any noise or film grain and texture uh, at the edges of your brush stroke when using a soft edge brush. Uh, this is extremely important when doing photo restoration because as you actually start to work your way around, if you're feathering off your brush, these uh, edges around the uh, areas that you've actually uh, applied your adjustments to tend to actually lose a bit of detail. So this is quite important and it's something that I recommend you actually uh, utilize. So I'm going to set the mode to replace. Now along with that we have the source. Now the source um, simply will allow you to either select sampled or pattern. Now you want to leave this on sampled uh, primarily because most of the time you're not really going to actually use a pattern in order to replace uh, damaged areas of your photograph which you can actually see you've got here you can actually add in certain patterns that you can actually paint into your photographs but in this particular example I, I'm not going to actually utilize that so we're just going to leave that on sampled. Now also we have the uh, aligned where you can actually specify that um, when adjust that you actually there is no offset when you're actually making your strokes and painting over your image. You can also choose sample and sample will simply allow you to specify whether you're working on the current layer, the current or below layer uh, or all layers uh, that are specific to your image that you're actually working on. Most of the time you'll leave this set to current layer because if you 
ever have done any photo restoration, what you'll tend to do is you'll have a background layer and you'll duplicate it. You'll keep the original one uh, just in case along the way that you actually make any errors with your restoration and you want to jump back and say perhaps borrow a piece of the original file in order to replace the areas that you've sort of missed because um, as you're probably aware, restoring photographs like this can take a lot of hours. So you really don't want to get, a, you know, halfway through the process or th three quarters the way through the process and find that you've stuffed up and you can't get a piece of information or detail back in your photograph. So that's extremely important. And finally, we have the clone source panel. So if we just go across here to this little icon here, it looks like a little clone stamp. If we just click on that, you'll see over in the right hand side here, we have the clone source panel. And this gives you a range of specific options from which you can um, use to uh, simply adjust and control the performance of your healing brush. So you can actually choose that when making adjustment, you can actually offset the uh, sampled area that you're actually specifying. You can choose the width and the height that you're actually making your adjustments at and also the angle with that clone source is actually being applied to your image uh, uh, along with a range of other options from frame offset to um, show overlay to clipped auto hide and invert but in most cases you're probably really not going to utilize this too much unless you're really pedantic so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to go and magnify this image so we can just just uh, adjust some of the areas. So here's quite a substantial blemish or imperfection on this particular um, photograph or the outside framing of this particular photograph. Now what you normally want to do, as I mentioned earlier, is you want to duplicate the background layer so you're not working on the original and you're actually working on a duplicate. That way, as I mentioned, you're not going to actually um, you'll be able to go backtrack later on if you make any mistakes. So having done that, the first step that we're going to do is essentially go back to the healing brush tool. Now, when you're actually making your adjustments, what you want to do is you want to actually clone a area from which you're actually going to apply to the imperfections. So you want to actually hold down your alt key on your PC keyboard or your option key on your Mac and actually choose an area. This area here looks quite good for being an area that I would um, use to replace this area that's been affected here. And as you can see, as I just start to hover over, um, or just adjust the mode back to replace again, as I just hover over, you can see that it's actually placing that over the top of it and giving you a visual prior to me actually doing anything. Now, if I just quickly click and hold down as I make my adjustment, you'll notice now that that has actually replaced the affected area or the damaged area in the photograph. And that's essentially how the healing brush tool works. Now, there is also the spot healing brush tool. If we go back up to the healing brush tool and we just click on spot healing brush tool, you notice the primary difference is you have three different type uh, controls up the top here. The first being is your proximity match. Now proximity match uses pixels around the edge of the selection to find an area to use as a patch. Now the create texture actually uses pixels in the selection to create a texture. Now if the texture doesn't work, try dragging through the area a second time. Now, finally, we have content aware. Now you may or may not have seen this from uh, videos already in this particular module, but content aware simply compares nearby image content to seamlessly fill the selection. So it's basically reproducing areas of nearby content and it's uh, realistically maintaining those key details such as shadows and object, um, object edges. So essentially, the the actual um, spot healing brush tool you, you're going to primarily use for spots so in this example i've got a spot here and i've got a spot here so you can go around just clicking on areas where you we notice there are particularly just spots in general and it will primarily go and actually replace them and repair those spots for you now in the next video we'll take a look at the benefits and disadvantages 
of using the clone stamp over the healing brush tool.